Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, about a sysadmin who learned to check in and ask hard questions before accepting a job. The second story, a server gets the last laugh on a difficult customer who complains about made-up problems and demands free food by only discounting half of her uneaten pretzel. The third story, the owner had made many questionable business transactions, but justice was served when an unexpected inspection of the corporate office revealed the truth. The first story is, Old Man Sysadmin and His Cautionary Tale of Tech I just wanted to tell a cautionary tale, my cautionary tale, about how I started in my career. I tell the story because I want nobody to go through some of the things that I had. Back in the early 2000s, I graduated with my BS of education prepared to teach. I enjoyed teaching. I did well with it. However, the prospects of dealing with parents, drama, and the straw that broke the camel's back, the incredibly tiny salary scared me away. During college, I worked as a web and software developer and started to listen to people on the other side of the country that I could do much better salary-wise and not have to deal with hostility of high school education. If I apply myself to the tech sector, I interviewed around and found a job clear across to the west coast, far from home. A big step. I stepped into it with bravery thinking eventually maybe I could combine teaching and technology once I got far enough. Of course, this was the early 2000s and the tech bubble burst. After six months of employment and being out on my own, I was unemployed. I scrambled to find new work and stories about web and software people being out on the street starving in the community terrified me. I applied to everything and anything. I didn't know better, but I didn't do a good job vetting. I just wanted to thrive, live, and enjoy my new developing chapter in my adult life. Lesson? Vet and don't panic. Ask lots of hard questions. It's okay to not answer the important questions the way you think that prospective employer would want you to hear. Interviews are two-way streets. Anyway, 21 days later, I interviewed as a sysadmin and web developer for a medical portal company. Despite the fact that there were a number of red flags that I glossed over in the interview, I just wanted to get working again. The staff seemed very nice including a person who would become my eventual manager, who was fair, honest, and hardworking. He cared about the people under him, but the actual CEO of the company was a micromanager that went beyond any extreme that I've had so far in my 20-year career. Worst, I learned that he had a chemical imbalance and was commonly paranoid and erratic because of it. There's a myriad of things that happened during my 18 months working for this company, and it was a small company. The tech team was three people including myself. This is not a comprehensive list but more of the tip of an iceberg of awfulness. The CEO would frequently come in and tell us we were stupid at regular intervals. That we should feel lucky we're all working for him instead of starving out in the streets like all the other tech workers. Any schools that we went to to learn should be shut down because of the level of incompetence we were bringing to the job. My six-month job review involved a palm reading to determine if my character and soul was truly compatible with the goals of the company. He frequently tested the resolve of employees by leaving early only to park around the corner in a hidden alley so he could see who else left early. He would turn off the exchange email server during the weekend, and I'd get a chewing out because he didn't get an email over the weekend. We were given extremely tight deadlines that led to 90, 100, and 110 hour work weeks for all of us. And at the end of it, the product we delivered would sit on the proverbial shelf doing nothing. One of those particular projects waited for two months before it was greenlit to go to production. I had to set up a kiosk in front of the CEO's office, because that was the only way we were allowed to access the network to research any work we had to do for Python programming or anything. Eventually it was only myself, the C-levels, and my manager that had no nominal access to the internet, and they wanted me to follow those rules as well but realized that they could not since I held a few important keys to the kingdom. I don't think I need to highlight all the inappropriate and frankly abusive elements existed here. Staff had a fast burn rate at this company. The problem and lesson was that I was too proud to step backwards, too ambitious, and can only move forward. I was very green, fresh out of college, and I didn't want to fail. I started to believe that I was stupid and incompetent because it did take me time to do the things they wanted me to do. I still had some learning to do, I didn't have good coping skills at the time for all the strain that I was undergoing, and I didn't know how to say no or to quit. I just plowed forward and let things continue. Big mistake. Eventually I felt something go pop in my head, and apparently I went into some kind of mental safe mode. Sort of an automatic pilot. I was interviewing at other places as they came up, but hiring during the time after the dot-com bubble burst was hard, 
And frankly, I was in automaton mode, enough that I wasn't sure that I was hireable. I must have looked like a disaster to these other companies. I'm not sure if I would have hired myself based on my mental condition. My local new friends offered me frequent outs. I could live with them. I could stay with them until I could figure things out and reorganize myself. I should have quit sometime in the first third of my time there. I should have never let them abuse me or let that happen to me because it just made me a worse candidate to hire elsewhere. I could have focused on a new opportunity entirely rather than fighting multiple battles. But I was too proud, happy to have an apartment by myself. No roommates, just me. I was enjoying my independence if anything else. I went home for Christmas and got together with some old friends who started a new tech company. At the party, they were glad to see me, but it didn't take very long for them to say, what the hell happened to you? What did they do to you out there? I explained as best as I could. Seven months later, they gave me a job offer to move back to my old home turf. They swore that they would help and teach me how things should be. A very hard choice because honestly, when I actually had the free time, I was enjoying where I was. I had new friends, but I realized that it was killing me and I was not flourishing. I was floundering. I tucked my tail between my legs, quit and took a month off. It was like taking a big deep breath of fresh mountain air and I could think again. I never had another experience like that ever again in my 20 years since. I learned lessons, important lessons. I still have some mental twitches and scarring from the experience, but in the end, I learned what not to do. I learned how to not treat people. In the time between then and now, I've worked at several places, every one of them better than that experience. While I generally want to remain as an individual contributor, I also acted as a team lead and have taken what I've learned. I'm somewhat teaching and doing technical work, mentoring, sort of what I want to do going forward. In the end, it worked out. My tale sums up as this, know when to walk away. Know that you're good, important, and smart. You got this, you can do this. Do not let them beat you down. Everyone deserves better than that. Your health, both mentally and physically, is paramount. Then family and then work. No job is good enough for someone to be mistreated and abused to the point of considering alternative ways of escape, including death. Don't continue until something goes snap in your brain. Take care of you. The second story is, just a little justice boner that you all deserve during these rough times. I'll try and keep it concise, but it's too thrilling to undersell. So my AM recently did his last two weeks, and I had my top nightmare table of 2021, already calling the winner in February. That's where we're at, guys. The oldest of the two ladies, think mother and daughter, first complained that she ordered bone in instead of boneless wings. After a solid order verification from me, because they kept flip-flopping while ordering. Whatever, shady, but it happens. We comped the boneless and rushed out bone-in wings to them. She then provided to me her commentary on her fresh out the fryer fries. She said, and I effing quote, don't ever throw old fries back in the fryer and think no one is gonna notice, sweetie. One, we did not. Two, I certainly did not, given that I'm not effing BOH staff. Three, I hope her retirement home is SH. Anyway, I bring her another order of fries. Hot on the outside and frozen on the inside. What is with you people? 1000% cooked to perfection, because I'd already informed the KM of the multitude of ways in which this woman was distantly related to Lucifer. At this point, I involve my shift manager, our dearly contractually departed AM. He brings out a third order of fries and she says, oh no, you do not get three chances for something as simple as fries, as the basket remaining on the table is devoured. Mind you, he has a week left and gives zero Fs, our champion. Okay, bet, walks away. I then check on them again, how's everything? Terrible. This pretzel was good at first, but now it's just stale and hard. Their baked pretzel appetizer that they ordered 30 minutes ago and she ate half of. Pretzels get hard as they get colder? You don't say. Anyway, the half-eaten pretzel gets important later. Take a mental note and let's proceed. Now cue my sarcastic A tone. Let me go grab the manager again for you, because F that SH. I can get fired, but he can't. Frankly, I don't remember this next part clearly. Couple weeks ago. Essentially, he went over and she whined about the pretzel, and he walked away zero Fs given yet again. Wish I could give you guys the deets, but I'd rather not make SH up. Least epic interaction. So anyway, come check time, he discounted nothing but removing the previous boneless wings we agreed to, and two fry orders that weren't consumed. The check still contained the wings, an order of fries in both apps. The look on her face after being about made up problems the entire experience and not receiving free food, I'll never forget it. Thanks for that, E. No percentage discount and still charge for everything they did eat. Her face went white to red in five seconds flat. You love to see it. She calls me over and tells me there's no way on God's earth I'm paying for that pretzel. I shouldn't have to pay at all. This was horrible. Once again, I offer my most sarcastic, let me get my manager for you again response. AM hears the situation, 
discounts half of her pretzel, walks the check to her table personally and says, we normally don't do this, but we'll only charge you for the half that you enjoyed. That quote I might have played up, can't remember specifically, but the sentiment and action remain the same. Five dollars taken off the total of the check for the half of the pretzel she didn't finish. Then, then this bee had the audacity to ask me for boxes for everything after fuming about the check, at which point I threw out, oh, so you would like to enjoy your food later? She did make me write down our manager's name so that she could contact corporate, and my AM brought her a business card with his name on it, and gave her clear instructions on how to do just that, his petty A self. But I'm pretty sure her embarrassed daughter sidestepped that. We never heard from the higher ups, whom are frankly quick to throw gift cards at the problem and vilify the staff involved. Maybe she just couldn't get an internet explorer to load Ask Jeeves before she died. Who knows? I also, 15 minutes later, God, this just sounds like an effing AITA creative writing project now, but I swear to God it happened. Got a $15 tip from an adjacent table, of another server no less, because they overheard everything and wanted to compensate me for the unsurprising zero the old hag left me. So I made a 25% tip off her miserable A, and got the best vindication experience of my service and career. Thanks E, and F you final boss Karen. And the third story is, Quiznos franchisee takedown. I worked many years ago at a Quiznos. It was the first real job I applied for and got myself. On day one, my first task was to check the fridge and organize all the previously prepared ingredients by date. I noticed plenty of expired date dots in the fridge, so I called them out. Quickly, the franchise owner told me that for those items, we put a new valid date dot on top of the expired date dot and put them back. That should have been the first and only red flag I needed. But as this was my first job, I just went with it. After a few months, I got promoted to manager I was only 17, but my boss insisted that I need to work my entire shift without break, even though I was legally required a 30 minute break at minimum. I didn't mind not taking a break as I was getting more money, so I thought. In fact, the owner gave all employees the option of working through their breaks for more money. Turns out she was going through the computer and putting our breaks back in the system to cover her own A and pay us less than we expected. Her shady business practices never seemed to let up. At one point, we ran out of Quiznos signature lemonade and chili due to her not ordering enough. Instead of putting an out of order sign up, she insisted on buying the cheapest chili and lemonade Sam's Club had to offer and had us actively push these items to the customers so she wouldn't be stuck with extra when the official order came in. Eventually, after I had found out that I wasn't getting my full pay and fed up by all her other shady behavior, I quit. And upon leaving, I wrote a detailed letter to the Quiznos corporate office outlining all of these offenses and many more I can't remember this many years later. One of my happiest memories was finding out months later that Quiznos did a surprise inspection, searched under all the date dots to find expired dates, checked the systems for doctored timesheets, basically checked all my claims and slapped the owner with a six-figure fine. She had to sell the shop and all my friends got to keep their jobs with the new owners, who treated them much better. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button to support the channel and subscribe. Have a good day.